Okay, thank you everybody. If anybody was on the line waiting, um, this is the first time I was able to somehow connect by myself. So this is really exciting. Um, so Booger Tell, it's Tuesday, March 29th, 2022. Kaf Vav, Pei Bet, and Rivamuna. We're learning at Rachel Bracha Center. Um, and uh, I'd just like to begin with um, just something that we noticed yesterday, right? That um, Rabbi Elias and Rabbi Yoshua have a discussion in the Gemara, when is the beginning of the year, right? And their discussion is, is it Elul, when Hashem starts creation, Kaf He Elul? And that would make Rosh Hashanah the first day that autumn and Kava were created, right? That sixth day of creation. Um, or is it Adar Nisan, right? Same thing, but on this side of the year. So, um, and of course, like any good piece of Torah, it's both, right? It's about integration and about layering and allowing space for everything. So, Basically, the Mukubalim solved the riddle by saying it happens on the Elul Tishrei side of the year on the level of consciousness. It's real, it's reality, but it's not physical reality yet. It's not in form yet. It's all the same energies, right, on the level of consciousness. We might call that thought, intention, right, where we're directing the energy. It's like the inside inner focus. And then in the Adar Nisan side of the year, it, it starts to take on form. The same energy patterns, but now we're seeing it, right? In actual physical, seeing it, touching it, hearing it, smelling it, you know, um, in actual reality. So having said that, yesterday was Kaf He Adar. So that yesterday would be the first day of creation and that as it comes in from this half of the year, which is number one, physical, we said, right? Number two, this half of the year is known as the half of the year of the chasadim, right? In other words, free, harmonious flow of energy, right? We spent this, the fall and the winter in what's called in Isarusa dilatata, right? It's very effortful. It's very much about breaking through limitations, facing off against darkness, choosing light, right? Um, doing a birur, in other words, doing a clarification of my will, what do I really want here? And how do I know what I really want? I get pushback. And that pushback, first of all, becomes a mirror for me to tell me how hard am I willing to fight for this thing? How much work am I willing to do to be ready to receive it and have it and integrate it and then birth it and express it, right? And I, I know that part of how I know that is because Hashem gives me pushback and that that's like flexing your muscles at a gym, right? It's, it's building your will, it's building the vision. If you're not so invested and there's pushback, good morning. If, there, if, if you're not so invested and there's pushback, um, then you're like, yeah, who needs it, <laughs> right? That's part of what the, the, the effortfulness is about, right? It checks where we're really holding about something, yeah? So we also call that, that side of the year also the gvulat. In other words, it's a time when the light is more hidden Right, it's it's getting in contact with the more hidden parts of ourself, subconscious and the unconscious, right? That are sometimes driving the car, and we're not even aware that they're driving the car. And now we are coming into Nissan, and Nissan first and foremost is a gigantic exhale. <laughs> right just as it is on the level of um nature by the way right all the animals start to come out all these baby 
lambs and sheep and chicks are born, right? Like the whole collective world is kind of going, ah, fall and winter are over, right? Warmth is returning, the sun is returning, we see new life springing up, right? So that's a reflection of also what's happening spiritually. Right? They're mirroring each other. So, um, so yesterday, so today is the second day of creation, Kaf Vav, Adav Bet. One thing that we notice when we say that it's pre-creation is also that we're not yet bound by the limiting energies yet of our own beliefs, of our own ideas, of what the world is, because it's pre-creation. You understand? At this, at this stage, things are still fresh. They're still new. Okay, so um, I think we are going to, good morning. I think we're going to continue from where we left off yesterday. If any of you, um, the Wi-Fi was uh, not working so well in the Bat Midrash yesterday. So Yehudi Goldfarb has the recording if anyone wants to listen to yesterday's class. It's, she may not have been up yet, but she has it if you want to contact her. Um, and, and also, um, so it was not rec recorded to the Zoom right now. I don't know if that makes a difference. I'm just gonna make a quick bracha here. Um, but it will, I'll try to do a bit of a review of what we did yesterday, a bit. Um, but I'd love to go forward also, and maybe we can just weave it together. Yay, book your toe. I got this set up. I don't know how. <laughs> I know, so it's like a huge behind. So I'm just going to quickly go around. Um, this is Rachel Bracha. This is Rachel Bracha's beautiful space that she shares with us. This is Safira Rachel. This is Ariella. She's a new caller. And they just moved to Tzvat. And this is Rachel Leia. Everybody, and then I don't know if we have anybody yet on Zoom. Um, nope, nobody yet. Okay. Okay. This perfect timing. So, um, one of the most wonderful things that we learned yesterday. This is this is the sefer that we're going to begin with today. It's called the Bnei Sacha. Sometimes people say the Bnei Sasa. Um, and it is it's an incredible resource. Um, his name is Harav Tzvi Elimelech from Dinov. And um, it's this amazing, amazing resource for, um, he quotes a lot from the Arizal, from the Zohar, from Sefi Yetzira, of course, also from Gemara, from Mishnah, um, about the energies of the world, right? To the deepest depths, that, like, he's, he really touches the heart of everything, okay? I don't know. It's a wonderful question. If anyone wants to Google it, the B'nai Sacha. I don't know. Um, what a what a great question. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll do a, a just mash a little bit of a review of yesterday. I know it may be a little frustrating those of you who weren't there, but um, maybe we'll do like this. Feel free to jump in and, and ask questions and ask me if you don't remember. Uh, sorry, if you don't, um, it doesn't make sense to you from yesterday. And, and then we'll, because I'd love to be able to go forward, because we said yesterday we were also going to connect it to some teachings from Rabbi Nachman, and hopefully even to the Parsha. It's a big order, but we're going to open to Hashem to ask us to weave this all together into one beautiful tapestry. Okay, so um, we spoke a bit about yesterday about... Um, Nissan being this incredible time of, um, I'm just gonna try to pull out some of the points from yesterday to give you enough of a foundation where we cannot redo the whole class. Did I said it okay? okay? Yeah, it's great. I did it, I can't believe it. <laughs> it's a total revealed miracle. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, I know I'm so proud of myself, but <laughs> I really am. <laughs> 
by the way, and it wasn't working. It just was blocked, it was blocked, it was blocked. I didn't change anything. The whole bracha came and stood next to me and it, it just went. It was all blocked and then you just opened up and then no like, password? No password, just. It could be. <laughs> okay, so um, so we spoke yesterday saying that Nissan is called the king, right, the head of all of the months of the year. We want to just take a moment and pause. So, so we don't receive this just on an intellectual level, right? So that we receive it. We, if you would like, you're invited to. You definitely don't have to. Just a suggestion to uncross your legs and your arms if it feels comfortable. If, it, if you need to keep it crossed because it helps you feel good in your body, so do that. And if you can release anything you're holding in your hands, also, it's just a suggestion. And if it doesn't work for you, feel good, then do what you need to do for yourself. Um, and it's just because we want to set an intention to, for, of das, dat, right? Of heath kashut, of joining our souls together. So that also opens us to both to share light between our souls so that whatever we're receiving is also bigger than each individual who's here and who's on Zoom or who might be listening to a recording. In terms of input and output, right? We're, we're, we have our own individual energy capacity in a battery pack, what we're able to take in, what we're able to transmit, what we're able to elevate, what we're able to um, to give back out, you know. But when we're in a shared space, so we get quantum um, abilities, right? Much bigger than our individual selves, but also much bigger than even our joined selves on the level of nature because we're joining the shamas, which are infinite. So we have an infinite vessel right now to receive um, healing. So you might want to take a moment to just gently scan, gently, gently is the key word, okay? Gently and patiently scan your life. And by your life, we might want to start with your body. Just gently scan your body. Just noticing any area that might be asking for extra love, attention. Love is attention, by the way. <laughs> but sometimes when we pay attention, we're like a little kid who just wants attention. They don't care if they act out. Sometimes our body acts out also, but it's just a way to get attention. And as soon as we give it attention, just like a little kid will calm down, our body will calm down. It's just sometimes using creative ways to get our attention. So I'm just begin by noticing if there's any area in your body that's needing extra love, extra light, extra help. Maybe it's something that you and your own power, right? of the finite self, of the body, or the heart, of the mind, or having a hard time helping access infinitely, it all becomes available. So just noticing that we're learning together and joining our souls or our energy field and sharing space in our finite worlds and selves we start to generate a shared treasure house of infinite light. So again, just bringing your attention lightly with ease to any part of your body right now that's needing love, help, healing, holding, forgiveness, Release. I just join that with you. 
this month with your breath together. And now just scanning in however way it feels, just with ease and gentleness, your emotional body, so your feelings, felt sensations. And again, it's very effortless. It's just a gentle a touch of a butterfly, just noticing what feelings, what emotions, what surges of energy, stuck energies connected to feeling you need some help with. That needs some attention, some light or clarity to be shined onto them. Help releasing, moving or transforming. and just almost offer it into the middle of the pot, right? Just asking Hashem to help you through your own vessel and the shared vessel, be open and willing and able to receive healing. And then you might wanna notice Joining us on Zoom. Then you may notice again your mental body, so memories, ideas, stories that you're carrying and holding that you need some help with. Healing, or help releasing, or help to know and experience these stories from a wider and more healed perspective and experience and vision. You might also notice and just scan any relationships in your life, and it's not necessarily, it can be relationships with people, relationship with your own being, relationship with parts of you that you feel in conflict with, ashamed of or afraid of, maybe parts that you have a hard time loving and accepting, parts of yourself, Finding it hard to believe that other people can hold or forgive or accept those parts of you. And you're not even sure how to do it for yourself. So we're just noticing and setting intention. Covering that. Just to, just to take aim. Setting the intention to receive help. Receive light. By receive, that's the key word here. You can rest. It's no longer up to you to figure everything out on your own and solve everything on your own and direct everything on your own and control everything on your own and carry everything out. There is help and consciousness available to you that's bigger than all of that effortfulness. And then you can just notice, right, now that we've transcended scanning the mental body, you can begin to scan the level of Keter the level of your deepest inside beliefs and your deepest, deepest will and your relationship with pleasure. Perhaps some of those things are out of balance or perhaps you feel disconnected, feels too painful perhaps 
to want something deeply anymore or to believe it's possible for you, even though there's other parts perhaps of your heart and soul that do still yearn and long for the, those levels of consciousness or those things. So just noticing the most trusting and loving and relaxed place, noticing where you need help, noticing what you're no longer able to carry through your own self and self effort. In all of those areas, you can gently place in the center of the room if you're on Zoom or you're listening to this at some later time, you can offer into the center of your shared vessel because, of course, infinite light isn't bound by time or space or physical properties. And trust and know that you can and that you will receive help healing to the degree that you're able to relax and allow Hashem to send it to you in the, in the time and in the amount and in the way and the language and in the expression that is precisely perfectly tailored for your neshama and your body and where you are right now in space and time. And now, because your own vessel feels held and seen and loved and taken care of, now you have something else that you can also share and give because we don't feel so starved ourselves or thirsty ourselves. And we have something now we can share. So knowing that you are taken care of and you're being held in so much infinite love and light and goodness and consciousness. See if you can access your heart, your kavana, your deepest will and intention an open, trusting states of self and see if you can send out intentionality perhaps to the person sitting next to you, perhaps to this person sitting across from you, perhaps to other people who are watching and listening on Zoom, or anybody else or any other state of existence creation offer that they also have healing today. They also get help and assistance and guidance in ways that are accessible, in ways that they're able to truly receive and integrate. When you're ready, just take a few deep breaths. Reconnect to being here in this space, body and soul together, present, available, naming. And we'll begin. So, Okay, so we said yesterday that the main quality of Nissan that's so exciting is that quantum healing is available. Right? Quantum. Can I speak up? Probably not. I'm so tired. Maybe if I take a little bit more tea. Oh, I did bring the microphone. It, oh, did forget that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did bring it, I forgot to plug it in. 
And sometimes I really can speak up and sometimes I, sometimes I really can't. Should I pause the recording? Hi, lovies. I'm going to pause the recording for a second. We're going to try to get the microphones. Up. Okay, we're back. Thank you, everybody, um, for being so patient, which I had forgotten to set up the microphone and my voice is a little, a little weak today. Oh, yeah. things. Should I turn it up? Should it be up? It's good. It's good. Okay. All right. So I think now we're ready to get take off. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being so patient. Okay. So we said yesterday um, it's the king of all of the months, and um, we said the Shevet that it's connected to is the Shevet of Yehuda, right? Which is very significant because. Yehuda, of course, is the seeds of Mashiach, David Melech, right? Mashiach, literally. And this is the um, Shevet, in other words, this is the energy that begins all renewal. So every time we would travel to a new destination in the Midbar, in other words, every time we're setting out on a new spiritual level, right? Um, towards enlightenment, towards healing, and, and, and don't get so lofty stuck up there. This is also healing our body, healing our relationships, our relationship with food, our relationship with physical intimacy, our relationship with creativity, right? It's not, don't only stay floating up there, right? But this is the energetic map. Um, on the level of the mind, we begin with Rosh Hashanah, but let's not go there now. We'll just plant that seed. But when we're bringing heaven down to earth, when we're in this world, time, and space, and we're starting and to travel through a new story, through a new healing cycle, right? It begins with Nisan. Because it has to begin first and foremost by strengthening our amuna in ourselves, in our lives, right? In Hashem, in the availability of help, in the availability of goodness, right? Because otherwise, why would we sign up for another cycle? <laughs> right? We're like, ah, I'm tired, you know? So Hashem, first, like a, exactly like a newborn baby, right? First, Hashem bathes us in love. Welcome to the world, baby girl, baby boy, welcome, right? We love you, you're wanted. By the way, in real time, if people didn't get this, right? You got to go back and fix that, right? Because that's the foundation. If you don't have that foundation, then tell us because we want to help you. In other words, if we're, if we're learning together as a spiritual group, right? Each one of us got, I'm sorry to say, but got wounded at different stages of the Seder Hishtal Shalut, what we call the flow of energy, right? How we came into our body, how we landed, right? How we received having a body. What, was that a safe experience? Did it feel like, ooh, this is delicious and yummy? Or was it like, ah, I'm trapped and I can't get at home and I can't get out, <laughs> right? What did that feel like? So healing is available. Wherever we got wounded in the Seder Hishtal Shalut, and especially in Nisan, because it's a new beginning. So whatever you didn't get in the first round or the first 57 rounds or the first 103 rounds, it's okay because this is a new round. It's a new time around. And we're gonna take you through from being a tiny baby with a tiny body and a tiny consciousness, but a huge amount of love and support. And you understand how it goes through the year the more we're tender and vulnerable and new, the more Hashem shines light. And the more we start to mature and come into our strength and our independence, the more Hashem steps out of the space to give us room to grow up and to give us room to spread our wings and try this partnering thing, right? You understand? So the, whenever we see Hashem really hiding, and Hashem, it's understands because Hashem's like, you got this, <laughs> right? I'm here, but you got this, right? And if and then we're like, ah, 
okay, but I'm a little scared. And then she's like, okay, I'm here, but try, try on your own, see, right? But Nissan, that's not what we are. Nissan, we're tiny babies stuck. Let's stay where the story starts. The real story is starting right now, stuck in the 49th level of stuckness. We call that Tuma. What is Tuma? It means the energy is stuck. We're stuck in some old stories. We're stuck in some old memories, right? We're stuck in some old beliefs. And we've tried our best to get unstuck, but we have a very wonderful Gemara that says, a person in jail cannot free themselves from jail. So that old expression, pull yourself up from your bootstraps does not apply in Kabbalah. We have an awareness that there's a Seder Hishtal salute, so that which is higher than us can elevate us and offer help. And we in turn do the same until we all get enough healing where we move into circle consciousness. And then we share creativity together. We share yaminess together. But when we're in wounded trauma states, right, then it's hierarchy because some of us are more healed in some spirit and some of us are more damaged and um, right in other spirit. And we share and we share that by going this way, that way, this way, right? Offering help and support until the whole system starts to come into equilibrium and balance. <sighs> Finally, <laughs> right? Okay. So right now, pre-Pesach night, we get to get in, we start to get in touch with, well, what do we need freedom from? What do we need healing around? Because it, it, the more I can get honest and authentic about what is stuck, the more I can eat my matzo with intention and say, matzo, work your way through my mouth and to this avar and please heal that part of my life. Please heal that part of my body, right? Because that's what matzah is. It's a literally a magical homeopathic remedy. And it's, it's like what we might call a mother remedy. In other words, there's two ways of treating symptoms. We can take at every single symptom. Okay, the person's coughing, the person's not sleeping well, the person has a runny nose and treat every single symptom. And we follow every symptom back to its source. That's kind of time consuming where we can look for what, what is the core behind all these symptoms, right? What's, what's the main energetic problem in the wiring that's popping up in this symptom, that symptom, this symptom, that symptom, right? But is really all being held perhaps in one story or one belief about myself and everything else is just a manifestation of that story or that belief, right? And matzah has the power to penetrate and heal the core root, the root of it might be showing up in my finances, in my relationship with food, in my body, in my relationship. But at its core, it's because something is fundamentally unwell, unhealed, right? So this whole parsha, by the way, Tezuya is going to be talking about diagnosing and healing spiritual imbalances that when they're not treated, end up manifesting in the body, on the walls of the home, so in my stuff, right? Because my stuff is just a physical manifestation of what's going on in my mind, in my heart, in my relationships, right? We know this. How do we know this? Let's, let's give a couple of, of examples from Torah. One we know is that when a baby is conceived, the space that the couple is in, I'm talking about physically before we get to their emotional space, right? Their physical space of the room, if it's lovely, if it's holy, if it's ordered, if it's got beautiful paintings or lovely decorations, has a direct hashba'a influence on the character and the nature, in other words, the, 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 we call this the levushim, right? The garments, in other words, the, the expression that the soul will have accessible to them in the world. That makes sense, doesn't it? The energy that we create something with is the energy that gets infused into it and woven into it. 
right? So that's one thing that we know, right? About outer space reflecting inner spaces. Right? Another way we know this is because we know that if Salat, right, this, um, by the way, on the skin, it was showed up as white or light pink. On the walls of the house, it showed up as dark red or green. That's a louder message you can hear, right? Although, actually, sorry, that's actually not true because it would come first on the walls of the home, I think, and then it would come onto the person's body, I believe. I need to check that out. Right. I think the I think the stuff was a warning first. I, I think I, I have to look into that. Yeah. Um, okay. But something that we always want to hold in love and consciousness. Skin in Torah is malhut. Remember that every sila or every expression of energy flows through also a body, a bodily system, such as the respiratory system, the skeletal system, right? Malhut, besides being actually birthing, right? So the um, birthing canal, right? The malhut is the skin. It's very, very important for what we're saying here because, right? Once something is seen on the skin, it's actually almost totally healed. You understand when it's inside the organs and hidden, that's the most dangerous time. The person doesn't even know that the conditions of disharmony are building inside and they don't pay attention to it usually because it's not screaming loud enough yet for their help, right? The more the conditions of disharmony build, the more it moves from inner to outer. Right, But the good news is that by the time it bursts through the skin, the cry is so loud, and yet that's exactly the beginning of the healing process because relief and release is on the way. Does that make sense? And this is exactly what happens um, on the level of voice, right? The other expression of malhut is our voice. So it's our skin and it's our voice. And part is in our voice across the board, kol with a kuf, kuf vav lamed. But it's our, we express our voice in general in three ways, right? Silence or no expression or holding back the voice, right? Speech or song. They're all ways of expressing or internalizing voice, which what is voice? So think about this, what is voice? Voice is the expression, it's the birthing of the infinite light coming into you, moving through you, resonating with your openness or your blocks, bouncing off of those, right? The same way sound waves bounce off of a anything that's in its way, right? And then letting it through you, letting it in, letting it touch you, and then reflecting that outwards, birthing it outwards. So whatever we hear in your voice, everything that you are and that you're experiencing, if you know how to listen well to someone, they don't even have to say words. You can hear tightness. You can hear tightness in my throat today. I can hear it. I mean, besides feel it, I can hear it. Mm. You can hear and you begin to hear not only with your physical ears, but you allow, right? What was Moshe Rabbeinu doing with his hands in the war with Amalek? He was listening. In other words, his hands acted as antennae to the spiritual condition of everybody around him, right? They became ears. Do you understand what I mean by ears? When you feel the felt sense of the energy and the light and the whatever, right? It's a type of deep listening. In other words, you're receiving, you're listening to what is happening in the space, right? 
that's a type of listening. Does that, did that make sense to anybody? To everybody? Oh, everybody. Okay, does anybody on, oh, welcome. Hi, I didn't realize that someone else joined us. Um, does anybody have a comment or a question either, either on Zoom or here so far? Okay, so. Um, I do have a question, Reva, if um, somebody thinks something is beautiful and by is about the world. Um, in the bedroom, can I ask a question? Am yeah. I unmuted? Hold on. Hello. Isn't Sweta Omer? We get to Malhu Chuba Malhu. Isn't that when we heal Malhu? So there's a level of healing that we begin with when we said this. We begin with Isarusa de la Ela. We begin with a Nisan with being a tiny newborn baby that just receives help and everything that it needs because it's, it's gone through too much. It has to have time to rest and time to just be deeply cared for and healed and believed in. And we can't expect a little baby like to go out and do shlichus, right? A little baby first needs to receive. So it begins in Nisa, it begins on Rosh Chodesh, and then there's a discussion, right? As always. <laughs> this past cycle. And there's always a past cycle, okay? Because we're entering now a new cycle. That's why we're saying Nisan is the head. It's a new beginning. We're getting ready to elevate a whole other cycle now. Whatever we did, from last Nissan, now it's going up. And by going up, I mean it's going up and down and up and down and up and down, but up. You understand, <laughs> right? Sometimes that's that's how we elevate, you know, we go like this. But each time it goes a little bit higher. And sometimes lower, but that's okay, because it bounces the lower is to right creative. One of those movements. Okay. So, so Nisan becomes also Rosh Chodesh of Kings. Now, understand that Chazal is winking at you when it says this. It's Rosh Chodesh of Kings, okay, actual kings, but you're all kings and queens. It's Rosh Chodesh of Malchus. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Thank you for asking that. Such a, I'm going to say that for the Zoom people. Um, so Ariella asked, so is um, is uh, Nissan connected to Malchus? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And you'll see that's the whole theme of the Seder, transitioning from slavery. What's slavery? Slavery doesn't just mean the physical land of Egypt. Slavery means for the, the 49th level of Tuma. I'm enslaved. I may be enslaved by my addictions. I may be enslaved by my beliefs. I may be enslaved by my traumas. I may be en enslaved by old thinking patterns, right? Uh, whatever it is, we each have it. We know that, right? And it shows up differently for different people. Some, I've noticed, like sometimes it shows up with people telling me all the time they're not enslaved by anything. I don't believe that because... I, I've just never encountered a human being that's not enslaved by anything, unless perhaps they're the Rebbe. Um, usually when people tell me that, I feel that there's a certain level of resistance or denial happening, right? Not that everyone has to be writhing on the floor in pain, but right there, there may be a certain disconnect from allowing emotion in or allowing a certain sadness or allowing um, a, a letting go of certain relationships if it's their time to be released, things like that, right? Of course, we want to in invite joy as much as possible, um, but allowing that joy to also give us strength to show us where some energy may be stuck. That's, what, that's all we're saying, right? So the month, the Shevet is Yehuda, 
and we are we were we're speaking about um, the, the geula in general. Geula in general. So let's pause there for one moment. What do we mean by galut, and what do we mean by geula? If we're saying we want these things so badly, then let's get a little clear about what it is that we're wanting, right? But what are we? Is there a shared definition, right? Through the lens of Kabbalah and Hasidut. I'm going to ask you to put some more boiling water in your hand. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. So we, we'll wait for you. Can you hear from the kitchen? Um, so, sorry, does anybody have a question or a comment? Just we're waiting for one second just to get a tea update. <laughs> Well, um, so we're just going to wait for a second, but the, um, the whole night, right, and Rabbi Nachman talks about this a lot, we're sort of weaving the two stories together, slave mentality and being a queen or a king, right, and all the different um, limazim, all the different hints on the table, right, are holding either one or both of those energies together. Right? You, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying? Sometimes they're mixed, sometimes they're mixing them, like, like dipping the, the fresh green sprig into salt water. It's the blending of those. We're sort, we're getting freer, but we might still be stuck in some stuck energies, right? But we're that's the that's what's happening the Seder night. We are getting freed by something bigger than ourselves. Right? You understand? Because we don't birth ourselves. When we come into the world as a baby, it's a very thank you, thank you, right? We don't birth ourselves. We get help. <laughs> we get birthed. Um, you had a question. Yes, you were talking about Seder and Shoshu. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, as the energies come in and flow down, yes. Okay, let me say the question for the Zoom people. I'm going, it's a beautiful question and it's an important question. I don't think I'm going to give it full justice right now because I so much want to take you also through the text so that you can feel it in your own bones. You know, otherwise it's me talking, but the text allows you to have the direct experience. Um, but so Ariella asked, uh, we mentioned that Right now, as we're moving through these waves of galut, geula, galut, geula, right, some of us are more wounded and hurt in, in various spirit or areas of could be the physical body, the emotions, right, the midos, right, the mental ideas and structures and beliefs, right, or even on the level of keter, which is our, our core will and desire. Right, we all know um, some areas where we are more tender and imbalanced in. We also have areas that are still stuck in our subconscious. We're not even aware that we're trapped or stuck in those places. Yeah, so we, we're carrying in both. And um, the question was part of the linear, the line, in other words, the Seder Hishtal is when you have a Mashpia Mechabel, right? You have someone above and someone below. Part of that system is when we're still in a state of healing and needing healing. Once we're all in a state of 
health and harmony, we move into circle, right? We move into circle where what we're sharing now is creative expression, is joy, is bliss, and we're sharing our gifts with each other, right? So Ariella asked, now when we're still partially in the linear, right? What does it look like to help another soul? Is that your, that's your question? What does that look like? So it's a beautiful question. I actually think we should have a whole class around it because Rabbi Nachman speaks about it a lot. So just as a tiny taste, um, we are all mothers, and I mean this by men as well, right? Although I think we maybe experience it, experience it on a different level with the bina yatela, with like the extra dosage of mommyhood. We call that bina yatela. The men have bina as well, right? In other words, we are all carrying not only our own soul, right? But each one of us has energetic wiring that feeds energy into other souls. And we also receive energy from souls. If you want to think of it in terms of wattage, right? A Rebbe or a Tzaddik might be a thousand watt bulb. So they are igniting, right? And sending energy. And, and by energy, we mean um, healing and strength to have a strong enough vessel to actually source energy from the ultimate light bulb, <laughs> the source, right? Because that light bulb never diminishes. It's never depleted. It never is, it's an unending source, right? But, right, so you can you feel this in your body that depending upon your own state of balanced energy, input and output, is what is available to you to help other people. If you are, for example, in a state right now of wonderful renewal of relationship energy, you now have a power, we know this, to bless others and to help bring them into healed states of relationship. Because you, in other words, when you have it, it becomes available to charge other people, right? It's same way like, you know, a car breaks down and someone lends their jumper cables and someone borrows energy from someone else's battery. And it doesn't deplete, you understand? That's the beauty. When we hook up jumper cables to a car, it doesn't drain that, 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 that car battery, right? Whereas we can experience sometimes that on the level of human beings, that's because we haven't yet learned how to source and resource, right? Brachas, um, mitzvahs, Torah learning, mm -hmm. singing, migunim, these are meant to be times when we plug in our own battery. Every Chag, every Shabbos, every Rosh Chodesh, it's possible for us to get huge downloads of energy. And right, and then what do we do with that energy? Right? And the idea is we first, first and foremost, right, in Aina Nili, we first allow that energy to heal and rebalance us. And it because it's the, the oxygen mask, right, on the plane, the stronger our own vessel is the more we can truly be available for others, right? That's something that I wasn't taught growing up. Uh, and I, I thought that love meant to just deplete myself and give everything and anything. And that that, that was love, I, that it was the Shem Shemayim, that, that that's what Hashem wanted, that that's what I was off. It was a mixture of, for sure I was off. It landed on trauma spots inside of me. And the messages I got were probably transmitted by other wounded people. So all together, right? But now we're, 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 we're healing, we're maturing, right? And, and of course, we don't want to go to the other extreme of, of, of narcissism. And it's only about me. And I have to put myself first. And we know that can be also imbalanced. We're talking about, obviously, balance and harmony. Nothing in an extreme state, although sometimes we have to be in an extreme state temporarily as part of the healing process. Again, we know this. We know these things in our body. 
in our experiences. So um, there are the people that we know consciously that we influence. But now Rabbeinu, Rabbi Nachman teaches us a secret that you don't know this, but there's a guy in China that every time you speak to your husband nicely, he gets a download of strength and energy and hope. This is what Rabbi Nachman teaches us, that there is a web of connectivity the same way there is, by the way, we know this now in plant life, that they communicate underground, right, for thousands of miles and even communicate through the air, right? We do the same thing. We're just not aware of how far reaching our influence is and our choices go so that when we're about to make a choice, when I'm, especially when I'm in my Mitzrayim space, I'm so self-absorbed that I think I'm only affecting me and myself. And who cares? It's my right to self-destruct if I want to, right? No, because, I mean, I believe that when I'm in my self-destructive space, right? But if, if I get a little consciousness, I'm like, whoa, first and foremost, I know that it's gonna hit my family system. Right, any illusion I have that I can self-destruct and it doesn't ripple out, right? Now I have grateful dead ripple going through my head. <laughs> That's how my brain works. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> thank you for giving me such an interesting brain. Um, right, it has a ripple effect, even energetically in, this, in the spaces that we share, right? But let's always, take this message and instead of it allowing it in to close us in fear, like, oh my God, right? We receive the message and we elevate it into, oh wow, how powerful every choice for life is. Every choice to just eat something healthy in that next meal and not something that is gonna cause me physical, emotional pain or whatever. Wow, the ripple effect of that one little choice all the way to Thailand, right? The ripple effect, the build up of, we call it critical mass. And we have critical mass in spiritual energy as well. Right? The build up of good intention. Every time you put, this is where people come and say, I've said this, so let me not make it about other people, right? Oh, I, I david and I david and Hashem ignored me and Hashem didn't hear me and there was no answer and Hashem doesn't love me and Hashem's left me out, right? allow a new thought in. And that new thought is no energy is ever lost. No intention. Where could it could possibly go? To die? Is there a graveyard for holy intentions and prayer? There's not, right? It's all being woven into the song until the song has enough strength to move into full expression. Nisan. Nisan. And that builds up. You see, how does a person get sick? Okay. It's one small choice. And then another choice. And another choice. And the conditions are building, but we don't see them. Right? Conditions. This is Chinese medicine 101. Right? But now we we'll call it Chinese Jewish, Jewish medicine. We're always building conditions. We don't notice what we're building until enough of the energy has been built. And then we're stuck with the structure that we've built. And then we're like, oh no, right? If it's something less than positive and it's like, wow, if it's in align with our true heart, right? Hashem does us a favor sometimes and reflects to us that we're on the wrong path without making us wait to build through the buildup of negative conditions. You understand? He'll be like, hey, psst, psst, I don't think so. <laughs> if I were you, I wouldn't turn down there, right? And we're like, no, it's fine, right? <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm just like, okay, meet you on the other side, right? <laughs> um, but the, the deliciousness of the buildup of positive conditions, right? Um, is is uh, what we call kaula. <laughs> That's kaula. When enough 
positive energy and positive conditions have accumulated. And that's what we call birth. And we've worked with the energies or the contractions and we've worked with the rise and the fall, right? And we, and we keep adding positive intention, healing, right? We stay focused on what we're building, even though we don't see it with our eyes yet, right? Until it reaches a time of expression. If, by the way, Hashem is so wonderfully delightful that we see that this exactly happens on the level of agriculture and nature as well, right? It's not spring one morning, but it kind of also is, right? It's a buildup of tiny changes. One day it's a little warmer then it's freezing again, right? Then, ooh, it's a lovely day. The birds are out. I think maybe spring is here. Just kidding, it's snowing, right? <laughs> but it's each time it wasn't lost, it was, it was a changing the inner conditions and practicing a new reality and practicing renewal until even nature gets strong enough to sustain it. Okay, now it really is going. Right? Now I'm really ready to change and I can hold the change. Isn't that delicious? Okay, so. What happens, says the Torah, when we get so tired and the conditions that we've built have mommish enslaved us and entrapped us? What happens? Yeah. What happens? My baby, my first baby, when she was learning to crawl, I don't know why she only came with reverse. <laughs> she would only crawl backwards in the beginning she didn't know how to crawl forwards so she would literally back herself into corners all the time and under chairs and then she would cry Aww. right and that's when mommy steps in and says Whoop, hold on okay now go <laughs> right again right so this is Nissan and this specifically this is all of Nissan that this is also specifically Leil Haseder, which is called Leil Shimonim, the night where Hashem watches over us. We're a newborn baby. We don't even have to say Kriya Chmala Mita that night because it's not a Malach, it's Hashem herself, her, himself, itself. Sorry, we don't have the language yet. Hashem in, in Hashem's essence, right? It, it has a protective energy that is holding us in such love and such tenderness and newness. Do you know this, right? You know this about Leila Center? It's called Leil Shimuim, the night that, right, I will watch over you. I, not forces, not a malach, me, Hashem, right? So yummy. <laughs> By the way, start now. Make a machberet. Bring it with you to the center. Go big. Go as big as an unlimited as you can. Ask and ask and ask. But let your heart get out of jail. Get a, a get out of jail free card, right? Ask, right? Because part of what we're talking about getting freed is malchut peh, is when you're what you're saying, what you're praying for and your true deep honesty, right? The honesty of your life and the honesty of yourself line up. You're not lying to yourself anymore. You're not asking for one thing because that's all you think that Hashem really sees you as, but really your heart is holding somewhere else, right? You understand? Or like, I'm willing to settle for that, but it's not really, right? No, malchut peh right? The redemption of speech, which happens all of Nisan, but very deeply on the Seder night, right? Is that, and we'll, we'll say in a minute now, we'll give a map of what is Galut, what is Geula. We were going to do that before because you understand it happens on multiple systems. There's a Galut and a Geula of physical intimacy. There's a Galut and a Geula of our speech. There's a Galut and a Geula of our eating. There's, right? And there's a general remedy, 
if you can't get that specific, right? We get different healings, different months, but the general remedy is Nissan and ER, by the way, but let's just not go there right now. <laughs> yeah. But it's a little shimmering. It's literally like a little newborn baby. That's how tender it is and how much love there is. So ask big, but, but again, it's a, it's a healing that what we're asking is what we really, really want, right? Let it get out of, out of galos. Because sometimes what we're asking for is, it, is we're, we're, we're attached and we're stuck on a specific story. And we think that's what, we, what we're asking for. But if we go deeper, we understand we're asking for something much bigger, much wholer. Right? And don't be afraid to ask for the small things. I mean, small, right? Nothing small or big, you know, in the light of, in, of infinite, but it's, it's small to us because it's something in a finite form or state, you know? Okay, so let's give, let's give a little energetic felt sense map of Galut and Gula, because this is what we're talking about one experience and then moving through that and transforming and changing and moving into something else. Okay, so Galut. Maybe the most simple way we can experience is Galut is where in our life are we experience, experiencing the stuckness, that's the word, of flow. Is a relationship stuck? Is my health, God forbid, stuck? Is my relationship to my own body stuck? When I breathe, do I feel areas that are tight, constricted? Are there areas, um, I, I was talking to a woman who told me she gained weight and she, she never looks at herself in the mirror anymore because she thinks she's so ugly and unlovable, she doesn't want to even see herself. That's galut. It's me being exiled from parts of my own being, judging them, exiling them, saying, you're not lovable. You're not acceptable. You're not allowed in the room and you're not allowed in the space. And if you're in the space, you know, you gross you, at least you're not allowed in my heart and you're not allowed in my acceptance, right? That's galut. That's the first primary doorway, entryway that we've all experienced, right? Being disconnected from relationships start within your own body. You'll, you'll, you'll find galut there. Are there relationships that you just won't let yourself think about? Okay, now I'm not talking about thinking about in the obsessive recycling thinking. That's just another level of galut, right? You think you're thinking about it, but all you're doing is chewing it again. And again, she did that, I can't believe she what. And then I, she did that, I can't believe, she did that, I can't, right? And we just go, right? And we think we're moving the energy and we're healing it, but we're not, that's galut, that's, the being in the mid bow and going around in circles. Ooh, here I am again, here I am again, here I am again, right? We think we're moving the energy, but it's like the little needle on the record player. It's just skipping the same spot again and again, right? So the first level of galut is energy that's trapped or stuck, okay? There's something in the flow that's constricting, that's blocking, right? That's recycling, right? That's the first experience of what we mean by galut. Does that make sense? Can you feel that? And so we might do it in our body. We might do it in our nidos. So that means we, we, we recycle the same emotions, right? Usually connect as connected to an impulse, to a desire, to an experience that always triggers that in us, right? That's gullus. It always goes to the same spot, right? Finds exactly where to hit and gets stuck there. 
right? How do I get freed? Every time I think of, I have this, every time I think of a certain person, my body, first of all, goes into gullus. My body goes, <gasps> right? Like it's just in reaction to the energy of the story that I shared with that person, right? And it gets stuck there. And the person can not even be in the room and I'm in fight, flight, or freeze again, just because I thought about the person. That's gullus, right? It's, it's affecting the flow of renewal of release, of what's, what new energy is coming in. And it's not available to me to use or access because the energy keeps getting siphoned off into these old graveyards of energy, right? Except not really, Hashem's not like that, right? I'm, I'm exaggerating it so that we get the felt sense, but really there's always doorways. Hashem's always getting us doorways out. Right, and opportunities for help. When we're ready, when we're ready. Sometimes it has to get stuck enough and bad enough for us to say, I'm willing to release and change. Because sometimes, and usually, the fear of change is so terrifying to us. We would rather be stuck in gullus than change. Because change is scary. And Nashville knows that too. Because then we'll go, oh, I'm just afraid of changing. It's like, no, no, wait. It's like, oh, you're afraid of changing. That makes sense. Do you understand how the difference between the way an Ema and an Abba would hold it than the inner persecutor holds it? <sighs> okay. So that's, that's Galus. Is that clear? And look at the word Galus. We've said this, but... The thing for some people here and for the recording, it's good to go over it. Galut also has the word in it, gal, a wave. It's a familiar wave. I do it again and again, and it's where the energy gets stuck again and again, right? And understand it can also get stuck even on the level of a belief. I have a belief about life or God or myself. And anytime a new influx of good comes in, I filter it through that belief and I go, nah, right? And choop, it stops the flood. It's okay. Hashem has, this is what we mean when we say, right? Um, um, atika, there's Atika Kadishin, right? There's an ancient one, an ancient holy one. And there's something even above that, right? Which is Atika, um, hold on, Atik Yomi, the ancient of days. What does that mean? It means Hashem is so patient with our elevation and our waking up and our consciousness. So supportive and so patient. How do we know? We know from this story that when we were on the 49th level of stuckness, Hashem didn't give up on us and say, okay, game over. Uh, my children used to watch these video games sometimes and they were going, and I would be horrified because the, the game announcer would go, you failed. And I was like, oh my God, what a horrible message. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, right? Instead of like, nice try, try again. I don't know, you know? <laughs> and it's meant, to, that was meant to motivate you to like, oh my God, I can't be a failure. Okay, let me try again, you know? But from someone like me, and I was just like, no. Um, <laughs> um, right? But when we're on the 49th level of stuckness, Right, Hashem says what? Where does Geula, now we're gonna talk about Geula. So the first thing we'll notice about Geula is it's exactly the same word as Galut. It just hasn't just, just has an Aleph added into the mix. That just changes everything, <laughs> right? So first let's begin by saying, what is an Aleph? Well, we know an olive is made of a yud on the top. This is Rabbeinu, um, Torah Vav. Hi, Orla, I love you. Yud on the top, yud on the bottom, Vav connecting. This is straight out of Torah Vav, Lukutei Maran, also straight out of the Tanya, right? Because 
they're all saying the same thing, right? Yud on the top, yud on the bottom, vav connecting. So what do we get? Yud on the top, yud on the bottom gives us 20 plus the vav 26. It's the homeopathic tamsit, right? Concentrated remedy of the energy of yud k vav k, right there in one little olive. Do you understand how that changes anything when I'm when, anything, everything? When I'm in the galut, the cycle, the, the stuck energy cycles, and I go, and an olive enters the, the room, an olive enters the space. Now everything is infused with the yud k vav k, and it starts to untangle the threads and open the energy pathways. You understand? Makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Space is allowed. Breath is allowed in. Blood starts to flow. Oxygen starts. I'm talking about first on the physical body. And then, of course, this is true on the spiritual bodies as well, right? Flow and connection is restored. Why? What comes into the space? The truth of yud ke vav ke, rahami, compassion compassion for myself stuck in these circles, compassionate acceptance of the parts of myself that I deem unlovable and unforgivable. The compassion itself starts to allow what? Movement. Movement. As soon as there's the tiniest bit of movement, healing can begin. Right? That all if allows something bigger than me, bigger than self, bigger than patterns, bigger than stuck outdated beliefs to start to move through and open, right? And allow things to get unknotted. Doesn't that just feel, feel so good, right? You understand, by the way, this is always the same all if showing up on the stage. It's the little Aleph in Vayikra. It's the Aleph in Az Yeshu. As, not yet, but as, when I plug in, it's the Aleph of the one more Tfila of, of uh, Ashira, right? Shira, there's the song is ready, but the Aleph is, becomes Ashira Lashem. Moshe Rabbeinu's 516th Tfila that unlocks Gula. It's the same Aleph, you understand? It's the same Aleph all the time. Aleph will also give you a little tiny roadmap of relationship. Aleph on top, sorry, Yod on top, Yod on the bottom. The Yod on top could be the masculine, Yod on bottom, I mean, could, this is what the Makubali teach. Yud on top is the masculine, yud on bottom is the feminine. That's one type of vav in the middle. You know what the vav in the, in the middle is? Kriyat Yamsuf. It's the new pathway that allows for new relationship to begin. Right? The vav is also the midos, it's the zaz or ankin. We could riff on this you know, for a long time, but right? That Aleph is exactly the model of soul mating, of Kriya Yamsuf, but it's also the model of the, the um, infinite and the finite and finding a way to connect. You connect something that's infinite with something that's finite. The Aleph. Okay, so far so good. You're still with me? Any questions or comments from anybody on Zoom? You can unmute and ask or write in the chat box. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to find a way to catch up those who were not in class yesterday without doing a whole review. Um, so if you don't understand me, please feel free to ask. We So we said the letter of this month is um, hay, but not just any hay. It's the final hay in the name Yod and Hay and Vav and Hay. So it's the hay of Malchut. 
and it's an intimately connected to Rachel Imenu. Already you can see healing there because if the Shevet is Yehuda, but that final hay is connected to Rachel, then we are also going to see healing channels opening between Malchus Beis David and Malchus Beis Yosef, which are just two different ways of us being in the world. It's always the same too. It's always the polarity, right? Masculine, feminine, inner and outer, day and night, um, right? The physical and the spiritual, all those polarities. Yeah, is that clear to everybody? Okay, so we said yesterday, um, it is a redemption of the voice. It is an opportunity to speak, to pray, to sing from a place of ge'ula, meaning the intentionality of our heart and the expression are lined up in a true way. So there's not hiding. I'm saying one thing, but I'm really feeling something else. That's one level, right? Or even to Hashem, I'm praying, but I'm still hiding certain parts of myself, right? What we want to do is to bring full presence, full intentionality. And, and, and part of the way we learned this out yesterday is to say that this final hey is talking about the feminine, Shrina, lifting the Shrina from the dust. It's not just, but it also includes an actual woman, but it's the body. It's our true inner self, right? It's bringing her home. Remember, we, we talked about Rabbeinu's story of Avedat Bat Melech, the last princess, right? What does that really mean? It means going in search of our true authentic self, our true authentic voice. It's not only a story, by the way, about women. It's a story about human beings. And Shrina is also the loving and compassionate and harmonizing energy between us. So it's also going in search for that. How do we bring that back? How do we bring that home? Okay, so is that an, a good enough sort of catching up of yesterday? And we spoke about in the body, it's the right leg and it's Netzach. And we said, because there's a quality of quantum healing available in Nisan. And we, this is part of the reason we say Shira Shirim, right? Is that this, that whole story is representative of the healing that's available in this month. Ad Kadei Kach of, right? Why do we use, right? Rabbi Kiva says that's Kodesh Kadoshim because you, you understand how intimate and deep and specific the healing goes on the level of Kodesh Kadoshi, right? On the level of Ish and Isha. So we spoke about um, this right leg having this leaping, jumping quality, right? And we and it says even Hashem is doing this, called Dodi, right? Right? Hashem's like, I can't wait anymore. I can't wait. I'm he's Hashem's leaping over hills and jumping over mountains, right? To restore flow, to restore love, to restore connection, to restore hope. Right? Let's start over again. Let's start over. This is the big reset in relationship. Like, okay, we, we got off track. But at the heart of it all, we love each other. We believe in each other. That's what the Seder night is. We got, I got enslaved in my stuff. You got enslaved in your stuff. We lost sight. We lost sight of the goal. We lost sight of each other. But hold on one second. Let's take a step back and remember how much we love each other. Remember why we chose each other to begin with, right? Yeah. And Hashem and, and this excitement, you know, it doesn't have the same expression. We said this yesterday in English to pass over. Okay, so I'm hurting everybody and I'm not going to hurt you. That's the way it gets said in English, right? Because it was the, the night of the Makat Behorot, right? It's so much deeper than that. 
it's it's also leaping running to be of aid and assistance and support and right yeah okay so that's kind of where we got yesterday and we said that that right leg is connected to netzach to quantum leaping quantum leaping you it's not step by step i fix this pattern in me and then i go to therapy and i do some 12 step work and maybe that gets a little bit rebalanced right it's when we're on the 49th level of feelings i've tried everything i've done the therapy i've done the 12 stepping i've done the, the the retreats i've done the massage work i've done and it's all good right but I need something bigger than that. And that's my relationship with the source of all light and life to come and have a personal relationship and connection with me. And therefore, and then I can share that outwards with others. Okay, I'm gonna pause there, just ask. So um, this is a lot, it's a quarter to 12. Um, I would like please honest keep going. feedback because sometimes going. it's a lot of light and people need time to just exhale please keep going. and digest and keep going. even if it's yummy and delicious, please it's keep like going. Full, thank you. And I need to go digest my meal, right? Um, and pushing more stuff in is not actually helpful or useful. Um, okay, so I'm on <laughs> mute. Lana please wrote, please keep going. Okay. So maybe I want to open and say this. Um, anybody, please feel welcome to leave the space at any time that you, for whatever reason you've had Phil. Um, I won't be offended, right? Well, my ego will probably blip for a minute and then I'll come back to normalcy and be like, yeah, we the people have lives. They can't sit all day. <laughs> no, we can. Um, we can. But no, really, but um, Keep going. And, um, because there's such a lovely buildup of energy. So um, so I, I think we should ground it in some text learning and it will be available for the recording for those of you who can't stay in the space. Thank you, yeah, it is. But again, um, if, if that's not something possible for people, please don't let it throw you off your center in any way. If it is possible, then it's wonderful. Okay. I feel very cold. I I never know because I. I generally feel cold. So is it not working? I mean, I just feel cold. Just door open? No, it's closed. Okay. Whatever people need to do with that, it's, that's, that's fine with me. I, I do feel very cold, but I tend to feel cold. So, okay. I wouldn't know because I don't feel yeah, okay. I don't I don't feel more. Okay, so we're we're gonna go back into some text. So I think the goal is for me that we'll we'll go till 12, which is nine more minutes. And then I think we'll leave a couple minutes for questions. So maybe we'll do like six minutes of text and then we'll and then we'll hi. And then we'll ask for is that a hand up to ask a question or you're just waiting? Yes, it's, okay. You have a question. It's a it's a hand up, but I don't think I can be heard. I don't know Have why I can't hear you. Do you want to write in the chat box? Okay. I wait. Hold on. Let me check. I unmuted, but can't be heard. Yeah, I think that might be because of this microphone. This is like okay. a special podcasting microphone that doesn't seem to let people talk. Let me try it without it for a second and see. Could you try speaking now? Yes, I can try speaking. Can still, you hear me? You're still muted. I'm sorry. Okay. It's one of those tech difficulties. Do you want to write in the chat? Yes. Uh, okay. Sorry. Rachel Leia will be back in the room and she might be able to. It's way above my pay grade. <laughs> like, no, I 
Can you guys hear me though? Can you hear me? No? Can you hear yes. me? Can they hear me? This is so weird. They can't respond. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, me. but they they unmute, but I can't hear them. I tried unplugging this, but I still couldn't hear them. I wonder why. Oh, I did push automatically mute upon entry, but they should be able to unmute themselves. I don't think so. I don't think so. No. See, Yehida is talking, but we're not hearing her. All right, we'll figure it out after. She's muted. Sorry, she's not muted. She's not muted, but we can't hear her. Am I unmuted now? Okay. All right, loveys. I want to be careful that, with the time. That it's it's eleven fifty-three. Chavush. Let's let's just bring it home. It's eleven fifty-four. Let's try to finish by twelve, so we can just round it. Okay. So. Um, Oh, I'm going to wait for a second because I think Rachel Leo will need this for her for the notes. One of the things that we noticed Reba, also wait, yesterday I is the sign of the month is the um, tale, the sheep, right? And we we made the connection yesterday that Rachel Imenu, the the name Rachel means a U, as in E W E, right? As in a sheep. So she's very deeply connected. Um, so I just wanted to say this when Rachel Leah was in the room. So the final hay is connected to, um, to breath, to malchut, to birth, to the aim habanim, to Rachel, to Shrina, which is the feminine, feminine and the divine presence in physical reality. The divine energy and presence of Hashem between people. Okay. And something that we mentioned yesterday is that Nisan in Gematria is Pe times two, right? We spoke yesterday about redeeming speech and voice, as in Pesach, consisting of the two words Pe or mouth and sach as in siach, right? Right, as, as um, using speech to be able to get us out of galut. Okay, so this is, I think, where we'll end. We're gonna wrap today one minute and say that we have different tools available to us to get help in moving stuck energy in Right, so we have different ways of dealing with stuck energy, right? Um, sometimes we have to just ignore it or leave it temporarily because we don't have the strength, right, to battle it head on. Um, and what we call that sumela o seto. And that means right now we're not working on healing that, we're just trying to strengthen the immune system. We're just strengthening the rest of the system with the hope that when the rest of the system gets stronger, it will trickle down into those places as well. We also call that in the language of um, the Tanya, the time, the Avodata Biwim, right? Not even, I would say it's even earlier. It's what we're, when we're, when we're talking about um, itkafia, right? Suppressing sometimes to build up the immune system, to build up the banks of good in the whole system, we don't we don't head on work with any ill part of the system yet, because the whole system first has to be strengthened. That's Pesach. That's why we're eating matzah, which is a strengthening homeopathic remedy to bring us back into the energy of renewal, the energy of the true amuna, right? What we're doing on Pesach is strengthening the immune system, strengthening 
the soul, strengthening the heart, strengthening, right? Before we can move on to the particulars in ER of fixing each individual system and body part and organ. And by body part, we mean body part, but also part of our spiritual structure. We can't do that yet until we first bring the whole body back into some state of health. And matzah is a huge part of this. But matzah heals within us, first and foremost, is love, is amuna, is keter, right? By, by keter, we mean keter malchut, right? In other words, our right to be alive, our right to be here, our desire that Hashem created us because Hashem wants us to be here, wants us to have a physical body, believes that we're able to, um, to take on this mission and succeed in the mission, right? Without all of that, what gives us strength to try again? So this, and every time we eat a piece of matzah, it's meant to be building strength, adding conditions of health and wholeness and harmony back into the system. Okay. So I'm not going to do text today because this is the Ashkacha. I feel like um, it feels full to me right now. Does anybody want to ask a question or have a comment either from Zoom or from live before we move into Tvila and Bracha? Before we do a text, because I've been thinking about the idea of I feel like I, I feel like this. I feel like um, I am happy to stay and do text. I'm happy to keep people on the Zoom. I want to give people a space to thank you for that because I would love to do text. Mm -hmm. I'm just feeling like I want to maybe close this part in section, allow people who need to transition to transition. And then I would love to go further. Um, that feels really good to me. That did that work for you guys? Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's let's close what we've done um, here, and we can go further. Those who want to go to the next level, those who want to go to the next opening in the text, these recordings will be available, so you can do it at your own leisure. And okay. All right. Okay. Does anyone have the first? an actual, um, yes, I love that, thank you. Okay, does anyone have an actual question? First on clarification, question, something not clear to them about what we did today? If you have a question, because at the end, you, you kept came up so beautifully, you said you think you have screen samples, just to promote your own healing before we can go into but team, and at the end, it looks like you get back to the, it is a cycle of it, right? Like Absolutely. Even on a body level, right? We start again with the head and Adar is the feet. So it takes us 12 months to build an actual structure of a physical and spiritual and emotional body. And we've done that. We're, we're right at the end now in Adar. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay, um, so if we if if we're saying Nissan is a new head, and by new head you understand it's code for new consciousness, new cycle, new beginning. Head is always a beginning, right? Every we get this huge influx of light and download, right? Nissan, right? And we work through body parts physically, right? Like the toll, the kaved, the lev, right? Every month when we have Rosh Chodesh, we get an, a general influx of energy, but we also get directed to a specific body part. And that body part holds and represents a specific emotional energy, a specific mental energy, right? So that right? It's too much light to, to do all at once. It's, it's almost like someone comes and they, they have a thyroid problem and they have a leg problem and they have 
um, a, a sore throat and they have it, right? So we want to first strengthen the whole body. And then we, when the whole body is elevated into a, a higher state of immune support, then we start addressing the individual systems, right? And balancing them like the, the lungs and the respiratory system and the skeletal system, and right? So it takes us 12 months to do that in Kabbalah. So that we, the Nisan is the head. And by the time we get to Adar, we're at the feet. And we've built what we call a Komat Adam. We've built a physical and an emotional and a mental and a spiritual structure for our, I'm gonna say psycho-spiritual, right? It's both. Um, and again, we call it, right, the body-mind right, to journey through time and space. We've built what we call a Merkava, right? A chariot, a vehicle that we drive through time and space. And there's another dimension we drive it through, free choice, right? Making choices all the time of the direction of how to channel that energy into what circumstances, into what relationships, right? That's what we mean by free choice. How am I going to spend this life force that Hashem is giving me today? Where am I going to invest it into? Is that a good investment? Is it going to bring me what I say I want? Joy, light, connection? Or is it going to bring more pain and suffering? Is that more clear? Okay. Anyone else have a question before we transition into um, Tvila Bracha? Last shout out, three, two, one, three, two, one. Okay, so um, we learn from our holy masters, the point of all of this is to ground it into our lives, right? That it, that it actually changes our thought patterns, our ideas, our beliefs, our emotional reactions, our trauma responses, our care for our body, how we eat, how we sleep, how we speak, how we touch how we deal with money, how we show up at work, how we show up in time, right? We want this Torah to bring healing. And part of healing is that it affects us and it, and it grows change within us. So Rabbeinu teaches us the whole point of this learning is to pick anything that touched you, that you can pluck and bring it in and integrate it into a kavana for change in your actual life, right? And how do we do that? We, we take a little piece of the light and we turn it into tefillah, prayer, or a bracha of a blessing. In other words, we want to bring that into our system and plant a seed. So any seed planters, the floor is open, Zoom, live, And there's no pressure, there's no need to perform. You don't have to say anything if it's not moving through you in an organic way. That's also the Ashkaha. So I love what you said about uh, about it being a big reset. Like that, um, I think that this past year, especially has been very divisive. Maybe in people's families and people's community in the world, what's happening. And it really, it really touched me deeply that um, that we kind of lost sight of the fact that we really love each other and that we have to put that aside in the sun and especially now in this in this takufa of the world and to find a place to find a place for that love. Amen. Oh, Beautiful. And then can I piggyback on that and also remember that we also love ourselves, our body, our talent, our soul, our heart, you know, um, our space that we take up, our way of moving through the world and um, open it to that space also that we can bring it home to ourselves as well of like all that you are, there's space for you and healing available and 
But you see, the, the irony is this, the, until we, there's an acceptance, we can't actually begin the healing, right? Because we're still calling it names, <laughs> saying it doesn't have a space. Maybe we'll um, end with this and to say, part of a beautiful um, learning um, about the Alba Banim is those are all parts of ourself. Those are the rebellious parts of ourself, the cruel parts of ourselves and each other, right? The, the parts, the innocent parts of ourselves that don't even know how to begin asking questions of how to move forward because we're, we're very young and innocent, right? To invite all of those parts to the Seder, to get loved, to get seen, to get healed, to receive the homeopathic remedies of community and acceptance and love and support. Okay, all right, this is beautiful. Thank you all for coming and joining and bringing your intentions and your energy. And it's so different to, to share a Torah with, with shared intentionality. Okay, anybody on Zoom want to ask or share anything before we stop the recording or before we, if you want to ask something, but we don't hear you. I know. I've already typed it to you. I typed it. Do you want to it. type in the chat box? I did. You I type did. I chat typed box. it. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's just like it's charades. <laughs> I typed to you. I typed oh to you. She's like, oh, I read it. it. <laughs> can't read it. Read it. Look. See you. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. Read, please read what I okay, type. Okay, hold on. I'm going to stop this recording. I'm going to stop this recording. I'm going to, do I have to log out and log back in to make a separate class? I kind of wanted to make a separate okay, class so that people can listen to it separately, the people who have to go. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to log out and log back in, all of you. Just stop the recording, stop recording.